What's up guys, it's Zorba the Geek, and today I'm doing a movie review on Wes Anderson's The Darjeeling Limited. This is one of many movie reviews I'll do on this channel, and eventually I'll make a top 20 favorite movies of all time list. But anyways, this is what I think about The Darjeeling Limited. The movie was released on October 26th, 2007. The main characters are three brothers who have not seen each other in years. They all meet up in India on board a train titularly named the Darjeeling Limited. This is the first time they've been together since their father's funeral, and they plan to find their mother, who's working in an Indian nunnery. It's along this journey that they learn the value of having each other in their lives. So I will split this review into three topics, the story, the characters, and the overall quality, such as score, cinematography, and sound, etc. I'll do this for all of the movies that I review, so here we go. As already explained, three brothers embark on a journey across India by train. Now actually, spoiler alert, they get kicked off the train halfway through the movie after a fight broke out. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't disappointed by the fact that the entire movie didn't take place on a train. They fill up the rest of the movie with what at first might seem like an entirely different film, but it turns out to be just as good as the beginning. At one point, the three brothers, Francis, Peter, and Jack, are walking down a sidewalk when they see some kids drowning in a river. They immediately spring into action, and all but one kid were saved. They attend to the kid that dies funeral, and that causes a flashback scene in which the three brothers from a few years before are attending their father's funeral, but have some issues with the car. I love how the story stops to remind the audience that it's not all about Francis, Peter, and Jack, but also about the people and the cultures around them. I have one criticism about the story, is that near the end, there's so many poetic scenes that if you have no perception of time like I do, you keep anticipating the credits to start rolling, which can be distracting. Besides that, it's a great storyline. So the three main characters are the aforementioned Francis, Peter, and Jack Whitman. Each brother has a different uh, subplot that concerns them. Francis, played by Owen Wilson, is the CEO of a company, which is shown off when he gets his very expensive shoes stolen. What confused me was that I knew that at one point in time Owen Wilson in real life tried to commit suicide, and his character wears heavy facial bandaging throughout most of the movie, but he actually attempted to take his life after the filming of the movie was done. Peter, played by Adrian Brody, has a terrible migraine throughout his, the film, and about halfway in he finds out that his wife is pregnant, which horrified him because he wasn't ready to have children. Finally, Jack, played by Jason Schwartzman, is hung up on a woman. Now, this same plotline is portrayed in a short film called Hotel Chevalier, also directed by Wes Anderson from uh, recently before. Um, I highly recommend watching this before Darjeeling because there's a lot of reference to it in the actual movie that I know I'd be totally hung up on had I not seen Chevalier first. There's a running theme where Jack reads the, to the other two a bit of a story he wrote. Excuse me. Some of the dialogue in the story he reads is actual dialogue spoken by Natalie Portman in Hotel Chevalier. Jack always denies that his stories are inspired by his own life, but he finally caves in by the end of the movie. Even Bill Murray makes a cameo as a businessman late for his train. Why? Because every Wes Anderson movie needs Bill Murray in it one way or another. I'm not even joking. That is like a necessity. Other, other notable characters are their mother, who, like I said, is a nun in a convent on a beautiful hill in India, and Rita, a stewardess on the train that Jack has a short love affair with. Wes Anderson characters are always eccentric in their own amazing way, and Darjeeling was no exception. I have a soft spot for Wes Anderson cinematography, let alone Wes Anderson movies in general, and The Darjeeling Unlimited had one of the best cinematography out of any movie I've ever seen. I believe that a sign of good cinematography is that you notice something about the shots. If all the shots seem normal or even boring, it's hard to prove that those movies have good cinematography. Like, one of my favorite movie shots of all time is when Adrian Brody is chasing the caboose of the train at the beginning of this movie. I'd also like to include that they could have made the train in this movie some boring color like brown, but they actually make it a variety of colors, mostly blue, but with lots of art all over it. Another thing this movie has that's definitely worth mentioning is its soundtrack. The Darjeeling Unlimited soundtrack is my favorite movie score of all time, even better than Midnight in Paris, which used to be my favorite soundtrack before I watched this movie. As in, uh, th this movie has a mix of traditional Indian music and music from rock bands like the Rolling Stones and the Kinks. But I'm not talking about Satisfaction and You Really Got Me, respectively. Kinks, pro the Kinks provide songs like Strangers and This Time Tomorrow that are very great and I highly recommend listening to them. I also want to give a shout out to Peter Sarset. I believe, I hope I'm saying that right. 
who's saying, where do you go to, my lovely? He isn't very well known, but his song is excellent and adds a little Parisian feel to the soundtrack. So in conclusion, this is an excellent film, and I highly recommend watching it. For that matter, I recommend all Wes Anderson movies. He really is a great director that really, like, steps... He doesn't think outside the box. He steps outside of the box. He is... His movies, you know, you're watching a Wes Anderson movie because it looks completely different than any other movie in the absolute best way possible. But yeah, so the the story was such an... You know, it's only a story that Wes Anderson could do. And the characters were only characters that Wes Anderson could pull off. And the cinematography was basically like taking those two things that Wes Anderson did so well and putting his extra little charm to it and it paid off so well. A lot of people say that this is the worst Wes Anderson movie, which honestly I think they're just either they're either wrong or there is a bunch of Wes Anderson movies that I need to watch that are really good cuz as of now I've really only seen this and Bottle Rocket all the way through. But yeah, really excellent movie. I'd highly recommend it, but now it's time to rate. It. <laughs>